Hello everybody. In this particular task we are looking for the inhibitor constant Ki for a competitive inhibitor. So we've got a competitive inhibitor and it says here already in the question so we don't have to worry about uh, what inhibitor it is. But we also could see this from uh, the experimental data that we've got here because we've got given Vmax over Km and that is the thing that changes with a competitive inhibitor. And so we do an experiment, we change the inhibitor concentration and we measure the resulting Vmax over Km. And now we want to find out what is the inhibition constant for this particular inhibitor. So what would it look like? We know that we need to use a secondary plot or a Dixon plot. And just as a refresher, what we would plot in this case would be something uh, like that. So that these should be our axes. And for a secondary plot, we always plot the inhibitor concentration on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, if we are dealing with a competitive inhibitor, we plot the inverse of Vmax over Km. So we plot Km over Vmax. And we would do that for the different inhibitor concentrations and we would get hopefully a straight line, more or less. And this point here, this is the negative, negative Ki value uh, that we get. And this Ki value indicates how strongly this inhibitor dissociates from the enzyme. So how are we going to find this Ki value? So we just simply do this plot with our data and I've got already the data in uh, Excel so that should not be a big problem. So we've got our Vmax over Km. Now we have to convert them into Km over Vmax. So that would be Km over the max uh, that we have here and all we need to do really is we take the inverse of these numbers so that's equals one over these numbers here like this and all I need to do is you see the black cross here I drag the numbers down and now I've got my Km over Vmax. What I can do now is I can I can plot this. That is nice. Um, unit of course is the inverse of this unit, so that would be just simply minutes here. And now I can plot these uh, two columns. So this is my x-axis and this would be my y-axis. Of course we use a scatter plot here in Excel. So that's this one and I just simply go for this and I get my um, my secondary, my Dixon plot. Um, I probably need to label the axes a little bit. So here that would be my inhibitor concentration. Inhibitor uh, concentration and we said that was in micromolar. So that's this one here and the axis, the y-axis, that is my k m over v max and the unit here would be in minutes. Okay, so now obviously I need to extend this graph into this uh, direction here so that I can read it. The easiest way is with a trend line function. So I highlight the uh, one of the data points. So all the data points are highlighted by left mouse click 
Now right mouse click and I go to add trend line. So I get this one here. We can look at the R square value and the equation for that, although I'm not going to use the equation to calculate this value because it's not good enough. And what I will do is I just simply do a forecast and I go backwards here. So I guess probably 100 uh, inhibitor units will do. So I go backwards and I see I get a nice uh, plot here. And this uh, value here, this actually would give you my negative K I, that's the inhibitor constant. Well, we can make a judgment. It's probably in the region of perhaps uh, 50 to 60. Now we need to be careful. We get a negative value here, but we also have a negative Ki value. So the negative would cancel out. So our Ki, now it's the positive, would be probably around yeah, it's larger than 50, but uh, definitely under 75, maybe around 60, and the unit would be micromolar. So that is uh, what we do as an estimate. And now, of course, we can calculate that. We have, uh, we have of course, uh, a straight line. So here we have y equals m x plus c. So that's the equation for a straight line that we have here. What we want to find out under which circumstances, at which x value do we get y equals zero. So all we need to do is really rearrange this equation. So we have m x plus c equals zero. And we have to find the x value. So we bring the c to the other side. We get mx equals negative c. And then we divide by m. So we get x equals negative c divided by m. Or I can also say this is negative intercept of the line divided by the slope or the gradient. And although we've got the numbers here, so we've got a gradient here and an intercept, these numbers are not very accurate and we can do the calculation in Excel as well. So what we can do is we can say we want to find the intercept. So intercept uh, here, this would be equals intercept and Excel comes up with a suggestion. So we've got intercept and for that we have to do the y values first. So y values, I highlight them with the left mouse button pressed, comma, and now the x values, comma, close bracket, and I get 0 0.082, and we see there are some rounding errors already. And we can also calculate the gradient. And for the gradient we get equals, the command is slope in Excel. And again, we have to do the y values first. So here are the y values, comma, now the x values, close brackets, and we see here there's a quite a big difference in rounding, and uh, so it's quite good that we got this uh, different. So now we can calculate our minus ki, and this would be here negative intercept divided by the gradient, as we just said here, and we get negative 58.5. But we mustn't forget this is the 
negative ki, that gives us a negative value. So we just simply cancel the minus out and we get ki equals uh, the positive value of 58.5. And of course, the unit is the same as the inhibitor concentration. And I made a spelling mistake here. Inhibitor concentration. So that would be 230 micromolar. And uh, this now gives us this inhibitor concentration. So we would have the uh, reaction of enzyme inhibitor complex. This dissociates into the enzyme plus inhibitor. And uh, just as a reminder, the Ki is defined. Ki is defined as the concentration of the free enzyme times the concentration of the inhibitor. Of course, this is a competitive inhibitor divided by EI. And we see the smaller Ki is, the smaller Ki is, the more do we have everything in this situation. And because uh, we have uh, a lot of this EI, and that gives us a small Ki. That means the smaller Ki, the smaller Ki, the tighter, the tighter the binding of the inhibitor. The binding of inhibitor. And the better the inhibitor would be. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.